What's a busy historical event you can't believe actually took place? In 1920, President Paul Deschanel of France fell through the window of the train while traveling on the Orient Express. He stumbled up to the nearest signal box in his pajamas and told the signalman that he needed help and that he was the president of France. The signalman reportedly replied and I'm Napoleon Bonaparte. Q low track. I'm picturing an awkward pause followed by the curb your enthusiasm music. The Cadaver Synod. In AD 897, Pope Stephen VI had his dead rival Pope Formus as exhumed and put on trial. Stephen had a deacon speak on the dead pope's behalf. Naturally, Formasus was found guilty. Stephen ordered that two fingers Formasus used for blessing people cut off and his corpse thrown in the Tiber River. Then he got fished out again, began performing miracles, supposedly, got his accuser deposed and assassinated, got reinterred at St. Peter's and eventually reinstated as a former pope. Quite the badass. Don't forget that during the trial an earthquake shook Rome and tore down the Basilica of the Lateran from the altar to the door, as if the angels of heaven were protesting this horrid and macabre trial. And also how Stephen was later thrown in prison and was strangled shortly after. His corpse stayed dead and didn't perform any miracles surprising no one. The astronomer Tycho Brahe had a pet moose that he used to get drunk with. One time he brought it to a dinner party at a friend's house. But sadly the moose did not survive the night. Once again the poor moose got drunk on beer and died from a nasty fall down a set of stairs. Tycho Brahe also lost his nose in a duel. So he wore a prosthetic nose made out of metal. Some sources say brass. Others say it was a gold-silver alloy. He was also employing a small court jester named Jet that he believed to be clairvoyant. Battle of Tsushima in 1905. Russian Baltic fleet sails the long way, 16k miles and 7 months, started by them opening fire on British fishing boats mistaken for Japanese vessels in the North Sea, um, sank their own ships while conducting target practice, then were destroyed by the Japanese fleet upon arrival, they mistook the Japanese ships for Russian and signaled them, instead of firing, that's actually hilarious, it gets even better. Technically, the Russians had the superior force. They were just woefully inept at conducting a naval battle. The Russians had 8 battleships, 3 coastal battleships, 9 cruisers, 9 destroyers. The Japanese had 5 battleships, 23 cruisers, 20 destroyers. The Japanese suffered 500 injuries, 100 dead. 450 tons of their ships were sunk. The Russians suffered somewhere around 5,000 deaths, 6,000 captured soldiers. They lost more than 125,000 tons of ships. The Halifax Explosion. 100 years ago two ships did a shoot job of passing each other while entering leaving Halifax Harbor, in Nova Scotia. One of them was loaded with explosives destined for World War I. They collided and one of them burned for a while, then exploded. The blast was a circa 2 stroke 3 a game larger than the one we saw in Beirut last year. Thousands died or were blinded by shattering windows. There was a local tsunami, which followed a brief moment where the seabed was exposed to air, and then a monster snowstorm covered the relief effort in snow. Largest human made explosion even until the nuclear bomb, and I think it remains the largest maritime accident ever. Don't forget Vince Coleman who stopped passenger trains coming into the town, saving hundreds of leaves. Hold up the train. Ammunition ship a fire in harbor making 4 pier 6 and will explode. Guess this will be my last message. Goodbye, boys. And the French officers who started grabbing children from people who were on the Dartmouth side of the harbor so they would follow them and get away from the explosion. Alexander the Great named, or renamed, 70 cities after himself. Some still have the name or derivatives of it, Alexandria in Egypt being the most obvious, but also Iskandaria in Iraq and Kandahar in Afghanistan. Plus, he named at least one city after his horse, Bucephala in modern Pakistan, and Therms in Uzbekistan, which got its name from being too damn hot. Hannibal marching elephants over the Alps to attack Italy. 
and the fact that he left Spain to do this just before Roman forces arrived to take him on. And then Rome was just like men and continued south when they figured out where he was going. They didn't care, because they thought there was no way he could do anything. Polybius's account of Hannibal is fantastic, especially if you read what he says about the First Punic War and the Carthaginian Civil War as a context. The petty hatred between Rome and Carthage was insane, and had been going on for an insanely long time. Makes the 100 years war look like nothing. The time when Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte escaped from the island where he was imprisoned on after his army was defeated. He snuck back into France under the nose of King Louis XVIII and literally every royal guard and roadblock from Marseille to Paris. And when he was actually caught just outside Paris, he managed to persuade the soldiers, who just so happened to be former Bonapartists, to escort him into Paris where he managed to successfully cause the king to flee, on top of raising a full army to wage war against Europe again. The only time in history an emperor took back an entire country just by waving his hat. Europe declaring war on Napoleon. Not France. Napoleon. Napoleon's whole life could honestly go in this thread. This enraged Napoleon, who punished them severely. The Great Molasses Flood, the 15th of January, 1919. Massive wave of molasses from a broken tank flooded the area. It killed 51 people and injured 150. 2.3 million US gallons. During the siege of Tenochtitlan, the conquistadors built a trebuchet. However, the conquistadors, being an exploratory expedition, had not brought any military engineers with them. So they winged it. Surprisingly, they did build a trebuchet, which fired exactly one shot, directly upwards, which promptly came down and smashed the trebuchet. This event is chronicled in both the journals of the conquistadors present as well as the Aztec records. That is some Looney Tune shoots. What about the one with the cats? Something in history about using them to fling cats. In 1802, Napoleon added a Polish legion of around 5,200 to the forces sent to Street Domang to fight off the slave rebellion. Upon arrival in the first combat actions, discovering that the slaves fought off their French masters for their freedom, vast majority of Poles eventually joined the slaves against the French. Haiti's first president Jean-Jacques Dessalines called Polish people the white negroes of Europe, which was then regarded a great honor, as it meant brotherhood between Poles and Haitians. My dad is 91. He always told us that his grandfather was one of those Polish soldiers, which we always took with a grain of salt and a wink, since he wasn't even sure of the name. All he knew was that his grandfather waited for several years hoping for a ship to take him back home and once he realized the ship wasn't coming, he and several of the Polish soldiers settled down with Haitian women. We kids just kind of nodded and let him talk without truly believing him. Then, it was confirmed a few years ago when my dad, a couple of cousins, and I took an Ancestry.com test which put dad at 20% Eastern Europe Russia with connections in Poland. Hungary, Slovakia, and Romania. Mine gave me 8% of the same with similar numbers for my cousins. Really cool to know that the family story is actually true and based on history. Christmas Truce of 1914. Perhaps it is not so bizarre and it's just some part of human nature, but it is really amazing for me. Simultaneously the most pure, sad, happy, and tragic moment in history I've heard of. I remember hearing how pissed the French were about it. Imagine your homeland is being invaded. But on Christmas Day, your supposed allies and invaders spend the day playing football. I know it's not very old, but it still amazes me that a science fiction author can talk about wanting to create a fake religion and then proceeds to create a fake science fiction religion and it somehow has actual followers. The Dancing Plague of 1518 turn down for what? The first recorded instance of everybody shuffling. The assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand Catalyst for World War 1. Conspirators throw bombs at motorcade which miss, but injury others. An hour later, Ferdinand was going to visit the injured at a hospital and his driver made a wrong turn and stalled the engine right in front of a deli. 
Adeli one of the conspirators had gone to tweet and lay low. He came out and shot the Archduke and his wife, sparking an international crisis and World War 1. That whole story is kind of morbidly funny. It's like the world's worst assassins is went after this guy. If I recall correctly the dude who shot Ferdinand jumped into a canal to escape, but he misjudged the depth of the water and broke both his legs. Then he drank cyanide as the police surrounded him, but he ended up just getting really sick and not dying. It was like the three stooges plotting and executing a hit. Ferdinand also was wearing one of the first bulletproof vests made of silk. However, he was unfortunately shot in the head. Lincoln stopping a fight with a gentleman before it started, with a broadsword. Most people know Lincoln was incredibly tall, but he was also immensely strong. A lifetime of grit, graft, and chopping wood made his wiry frame tight with corded muscles. A gentleman of parliament challenged Lincoln to a duel for his honor. One day, Lincoln picked the weapons. Broadswords. Lincoln showed up to the field of the duel the following day, and with one enormous one-handed swing overhead, lopped a sizable limb off a tree. From a standing start, the gentleman backed out of the duel moments after witnessing the man dismember a tree as casually as one might behead a flow rid of broccoli. Lincoln was also friends with James Reed of the Donner Party. Reed was trying to convince Lincoln to come on the trail with him, but Mary Todd stopped her husband saying she didn't want to travel west. Lincoln would have come out so much more buff.